my previous video, we had a look at the importance of our microbiome. Just to recap, the microbiome is a complex and diverse population of bacteria that live in our colon. But what we also learnt was that a diet high in plant fibre is equally as important because those bacteria that live in our colon break down plant fibre into vital compounds that have an incredibly beneficial effect on our body. It's said that there are between 10 to 100 trillion of these microbial cells living in our gut. But when we consume diets high in animal products, these foods tend to cause us to have a bacterial population that's similar to the type of bacteria found in the colons of carnivorous animals. The problem with this is that these types of bacteria are not very efficient at breaking down plant fibre. Instead of fermentation, their actions are actually putrefactive. The makeup of our bacterial population is heavily influenced by the types of food that we eat. If we eat a very high fibre plant food diet, we will take in all of the compounds we need for that healthy bacterial population. Let's hear again from Dr Milton Mills, a critical care physician at Innova Fairfax Hospital in Virginia, on why animal products may be such a problem for our nervous system. If you're eating a diet that is primarily made up of animal foods, as we know have no fibre in them, you end up with a colon that is full of basically leftover protein residues. And protein residues cannot be fermented. They rot. They putrefy. Protein residue cannot be converted into anything other than a toxic compound. They have names like putrescine and cadaverine. If you've ever smelled a dead body or a, a dead animal, it has a very foul odor, and that's because of these toxins that are created when protein residues are acted on by bacteria. Protein residues cannot be converted into short-chain fatty acids. They are chemically changed in ways that they create toxins, not anything beneficial. Studies have shown that when people have diets that are high in animal proteins, that when bacteria act on those protein residues, they create a number of toxic compounds like cresol and cadaverine and putrescine and, and when these things are absorbed they actually negatively affect our mental functioning and they increase the risk for depression and anxiety but even more importantly the compound cresol actually interferes with the ability of nerve cells to make a compound called uh, myelin. And we know that myelin is the insulation that wraps around the axons of cells in our central nervous system and help them function normally. And you can think of uh, the myelin as the rubber insulation that you see on any electrical cord. And you know that if you go through and you scrape off the insulation on a plug that plugs into your TV or toaster, that if that insulation is gone, it will start to spark. The appliance will not work properly because the electrical signals cannot travel up and down that cord in an efficient fashion and something very similar happens in the brain and the central nervous system when the myelin sheath is interrupted because we are eating foods that create toxins as opposed to help create a healthy central nervous system. Toxic compounds that are created by the putrefaction of animal protein residues actually modify the way the uh, DNA in what are called oligodendrocytes, which are the myelin-producing cells in the central nervous system, that they turn off their ability to transcribe the genes which tell them to make myelin. So that's one of the ways that it interferes with the insulation of, of our central nervous system, and as a result, we end up with clinical psychiatric disease.